Hello folks, welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Yes. Um today we're talking about well SmackDown. SmackDown was actually a fairly entertaining show. Which is good because for some reason I was having tummy issues. But before I do that Oh wait, did I get this? No. It's here, so a little bit for my list of thank yous. I had to kind of look. Dre Piramon. This. What did I give up? I guess this. See here. No, I got that one. Oh, you're my tag team partner. It goes out to you. That was the only one I forgot. I don't know why I forgot that. I normally always get that one out. That's an off day. That's okay. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Or as I like to say it, Kevin Owens show. Because it starts off with recaps. Uh, Shane has security because he's going to have a town hall meeting. Meaning about that dastardly one, Kevin Owens. And look! In the crowd, the fun hall meeting, and she speaks. We have a Liv Morgan sighting. Yes. Hopefully, she'll be a little bit more active when I go to the WWE live event here in Orlando on Sunday. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, also, there's a Buddy Murphy sighting. Buddy Murphy was very. Liv Morgan was not happy, but Buddy Murphy was very content. I'll do what you want. Pay me. I don't care. So that was pretty cool. Then Rogan, then uh, Roman Reigns was speaking. Billy Kay spoke up. Charlotte was speaking. It was it was very typically the heels on one side, face with the other. But ironically, why was Otis on the heel side? Otis is the most fun face they have. Uh. And Biggie called Elias the, the, the biggest asshole. And in the ring, Kevin Owens hit a botched stunner. Shame on you, Shane McMahon. Shame, shame, shame. How dare you ruin the one move of one stunning Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Cutter was botched. So that took about 20 minutes. That, that was okay. Uh, we'll see how things go, because now I think Eric Bischoff proper is in charge, so we'll see what happens. Then we have Alistair, the first match of the night, it's a rematch, it's Alistair Black versus Cesaro. And again, this kid, again, you have two different styles, although almost the same style, though. Cesaro's more of the wrestler, Alistair Black's a pure striker. Um, definitely both have a European influence. It was a pretty good, a hard-hitting match. It was, you know what would be neat to see? Alistair Black versus Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't think that ever happened in NXT. Can't remember that happening, but that would be a fun match to see, especially if it's for the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, wait a second. Intercontinental Championships actually held by someone not of this continent. I just realized that. Bonus points for me. It was a really good, a hard-hitting match. Again, uh, uh, just the way you would think, a lot of forearms. Uh, Alistair Black does his teasing the thing. He runs. He, he does his backflip, the sitting position. Um, hit the knee on Cesaro, then hit the black mask. Cesaro sold it amazingly because he did spit out his mouthpiece that said the bar. But again, a really heavy striking match. Not my favorite match, but this was a lot quicker and shorter than it was on the pay-per-view. And because of that, it didn't seem 
plotting. So therefore, this is a good, fun cheeseburger match. So next up, we have Liv Morgan versus Charlotte Flair. Woo! Whoa, Liv Morgan's on the show. Yes, 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 yes. I forget if it was her or Carmella. That one house show here in Daytona Beach. I think it was Liv, and she was upset about being there. I'd be upset about being in Daytona Beach, too, so that's very understandable. I won't hold that against her. Um, if she's upset about coming to Orlando, that's a whole different issue. But it was Liv Morgan versus Charlotte Flair. And whoa, Liv can actually wrestle. She hit, she hit one move at least. On Charlotte Flair, it was kind of a uh, head scissors takedown. Tried for it again. Charlotte said, eh, eh. She caught her. It was a power slam into the figure eight. And that was it. Match over. Whoa. Charlotte Flair, woo, won, and really a ham sandwich match. Then Liv went on the mic and ripped the heads off of Corey Graves. That was pretty cool. I don't know if Corey Graves is getting any heat for seeing Carmella. But this, besides what Renee Young always says, has to be kind of close. Because she ripped the headset off Corey Graves' head, said, Wait, what's, what, what's this I hear? Oh, that's the world's tiniest violin. Oh. Someone call him the Wambulance. I'm bucking him up today. I don't know. It was okay. Again, it was a ham sandwich of a match. Nothing spectacular happened. It was just good to see Liv Morgan wrestling. And then, uh, oh, wow. There was a lot, there was a lot, of, lot more wrestling on wrestling shows. That's a good thing. I want to say on, on this show for two hours, oh, wow, there were six matches. Good. I think. I think Impact has at least four or five. Yeah, about six match. Yeah, about four, yeah, about five six matches. Are they copying Impact style? Indeed. We'll have to see. We couple more months till AEW comes to TV. So we'll see what happens then. And the next match was Boo Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Andy Rose, those those bottoms are getting lower and lower. Woo! Versus Ember Moon and Bailey. And for the most part, the heels jump the faces. First of all, I can never get behind Sonya Deville. I don't care how blondish Mandy Rose is. Thumbs up. No, it's thumbs down. It's boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, boo, boo. Every day I will always boo, Sonya Deville. She took the spot that my princess, Kimberly, should have had. That would have been impressive. Kimberly and Mandy Rose. Even Kimberly by herself on the main roster would have been pretty, pretty entertaining, actually. Um, Rose kind of knows can run the ropes. Uh, the heels jump them. Uh, Deville and Rose. Yeah, they do a lot together. They do a lot together. They're 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 teasing something there. Be very careful, WWE. We do not want to see any. Well, I don't think. I don't think the network. Would want to see any H L A. So Deville and Rose, uh, it was mentioned they do everything together, and yes, they also eat donuts together too. Uh, then it was 
a pretty quick match. This was a pretty quick match. Um, Bailey got beat up for the most part. It's a hot tag to Emma Moon. Uh, she hits the eclipse onto Mandy Rose, who does a lot better job selling it than Sonya Deville does. Again, where's my princess? Kimberly. So with that, uh, Ember Moon and Bailey go over. And really a ham sandwichy match. I wanted to back up a little bit. Look at more more in the screen because I'm wearing my Macho Man shirt. I always like to wear my Macho Man shirt. One day I'll get that other Macho Man shirt. This way I can read the notes easier and still be focused on that camera as well. So Ember Moon and Bailey go over and really a ham sandwich match. And then Bailey says, hmm, I wonder who's worthy to challenge me for my title for SummerSlam. Oh, Ember Moon. Ember Moon, do you want my SmackDown Championship? Do you want to challenge me for my SmackDown Championship spot? Yes, I will. So that was kind of nonsense. Then there was an interview, uh, again, with Ember Moon. That <laughs> There's all that there. Again, Mandy Rose's bombs are getting lower and lower. And eventually we're going to see something that the Tokyo Pimp Girls wear. Although we might see something that Lacey Evans wears. And if you want to know what Lacey Evans wore to the ring, especially for Extreme Rules, check out my last video because I made that my thumbnail. Um, today's thumbnail is going to be the normal old Hobo Tom. So then we have the New Day come out, pull a promo. Daniel Bryan was supposed to make some kind of announcement. Never did. I should say Nakamura had an interview backstage. Samoa Joe comes out says, no, I want to fight for it. No, Elias says, hey, I'm the hot new person there. She has a new intro package. That's, that's pretty good. It's more electric guitar, a little bit more modern. And, of course, Rain Yorton shows up. Because I hear voices in my head. They keep calling me. They talk to me. They understand. Maybe that's how it goes, or something like that. Pretty cool. Um, so this sets up a holla, holla, holla six-man tag match. It was Randy Orton and Smojo and Elias take on the New Day! Uh, Elias is pretty good. Elias, I mean, he's a smart heel. He can get, he gets the cheap shots in like he always does. Again, that new rope run, that new rope move from Kofi, it's like a weird trust fall thing, but it's just off the top rope. Really quick, really weird. It's, hey, it's different. I think that's what it is. I think it says second rope trust fall. Um, Biggie, of course, hits the class. It's, it's a lot of classic moves. Biggie hits the octopus stretch with, 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 with a butt slapping on the line. Again, really classic Biggie stuff. Randy Orton gets his cheap shots in two, and Elias has picked up something from, from Randy Orton. He now does the, the stomps on like the various extremities, like the, the ankle, the finger, the hands, the wrist, all the good stomps Randy Orton does. Very calculated. Elias is very quickly becoming a heel wrestler which is good and just not a performer. Um, and then for a while, Kofi Kingston got the hot tag. It was Kofi versus Orton. And again, um, after that, it was a whole face spot fest. All the New Day members, uh, Big E hit belly to the belly on Samoa Joe. Xavier Woods, who's getting beat up for, for a lot, for a big chunk of the match, did his somersault. Flippy thing outside the ring. Uh, Kofi Kingston did hit the weird trouble in paradise because it nailed Elias in the ribs. And, of course, Randy Orton followed up because Randy Orton was actually the legal person in the ring for this six-man tag match. And he hit the RKO on Kofi Kingston out of nowhere. One of the prettiest moves ever, probably. It's always fun to see that move out of nowhere. And, again, this was actually better. This was a good... Cheeseburger match. Then 
Then we have the Kabuki Warriors, I still think should be the Jumping Bomb Angels. Now, what did I put there? Oh, it looks like Billy can't lose. It's just that, that face that, that sometimes wrestlers get. It's that kind of fake smile, like, I, I have to force a smile, but I'm losing these belts. Um, again, it was uh, Kabuki Warriors versus the Iconics! Can't even sit, or, or is it Iconics? I don't, I, don't, I don't know, whatever that pose is. Um, they were wearing different outfits. They were wearing matching outfits. This time they were all white, or that... Like silvery white thing, so it's good. <laughs> hey, you know what? They look like their championship belts now. Oh wait, they do look. Like, oh wait, they do look like their championship belts. Indeed. I can't believe I just took me that long to figure that out. In this match, it was short. It was really fast paced, though. A uh, Billy Cake yell. She has an amazing pair of lungs. I wonder what she's like in the bedroom with Peyton Royce and Sean Spears. Oh wait, I didn't say that. I didn't. I I I, I had bad thought there for for one moment, folks. I, I slip of the mind. Um, I'm like somewhat seeing someone trying to get her to go to spotty with me. And what else? Oh, laser light show. So I don't think she knows I have a show yet. <laughs> Won't that be a surprise, folks? Um, eventually, Billy Kay gets kicked out of the ring. Peyton Royce gets this bright idea. Wait a second. If we get counted out, we're not going to lose the belt. They have to beat us inside the ring. So she grabs Billy Kay and says, No, 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 no. And then they take, they take the... Ten! Count. Because she's the perfect 10. And she's with the perfect 10. Married to the perfect 10. Along, along with, with, with her, her, her wifey, Billy Kay. And that just must be weird. I don't know. I'm probably thinking more. They take the 10 count. Um, eventually, the Kabuki Warriors say, get back in here. After the 10 count, because the Kabuki Warriors win, but it was a count of victory. It was lousy. And Peyton Royce's pantyhose do not match her skin tone color. This guy notices little things like that. Um, what else? Pa uh, Paige looks useless. This match... Because of the way it ended, it, maybe they'll do something for the SummerSlam pre-show. I don't know, though. This is just a can of soup. The next match is a rematch. Um, Andrade versus Apollo Crews. Andrade is upset that Apollo Crews gets to keep his whole name. Or he's just Andrade, no, no longer Andrade Almas. Um, Andrade was very aggressive to start off. Hit the, the Meteora, the double knees. Just really took it to Cruz until Cruz hit like a crucifix roll up and that was it. And I was like, huh? That's it? Whoa. So Apollo Cruz wins. Yeah, faces have to win sometimes. Another can of soup match. Then for the main event of the evening, because this is what it was all leading to, is Dolph Ziggler versus Kevin Owens. Da -da 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 -da. Kevin Owens went for the quick stunner, could not hit it. And Dolph Ziggler got in, I'll tell you what, a lot more offense than he did for his, than his pay-per-view show, and that seems to be a theme in the WWE. Wait a second. This is a theme in the WWE Universe. I'm beginning to figure out how they book their matches. I should become a wrestling promoter slash booker. I just have to copy what the WWE does. And at least people will be ready for the WWE. No, no, no. That's, 
Uh, that's way too much stuff. I've, I've seen a little insight as to promotions and bookings, and it's yeah, complex. Well, it's not really complex, but sometimes it does get convoluted. And when you have Massive Ego 1, Massive Ego 2, I don't want to be the guy in the middle. Uh, so again, uh, Dolph starts to get, he got some moves. Um, Kevin Owens went for a senton early. Dolph got the knees up. Went for his second time. Got that. This was a much faster pace, but when Kevin Owens went for the pin, well, Kevin Owens, about halfway through this match, it seemed to be, turned, seemed almost turned into a lumberjack match. So all the heels, led by, of course, one Shane McMahon, came out and circled the ring. Kevin Owens knew what was up. He did not want to get outside the ring because the heels could do whatever to him. He wanted to stay inside the ring where they have to keep at least one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Shane does, um, after Kevin Owens hit the second senton, Shane pulls him out and eats a stunner for his troubles. And then, of course, Kevin Owens runs. He knows it's going to happen to him. Oh, the Authors of Pain were there, too. So maybe we'll see the Authors of Pain at the live event. That would be pretty cool. The heels chase Kevin Owens out. Shane McMahon definitely eats a better sell job the second time. Thank you, Owens. But overall, it was a better match than what they had. So therefore, this is going to be upgraded to a ham sandwich. And that was SmackDown. So... It was actually a pretty decent show. A lot of wrestling. And if you're going to have a lot of wrestling on the show, even if it's bad wrestling, I mean, I will still give you a lot of credit where credit's due. And I'll say it was, a, it was an enjoyable show. What makes it the better than Raw is that it's only two hours. So it goes by a lot quicker. Doesn't doesn't there is no doll drums, even though some of the matches are not the best. It seems to go a lot quicker. Um, so this week, this week's schedule, I'm off Wednesday, Thursday. On oh wait, I'm off Wednesday. Oh Friday, I do my impact show. Uh, Thursday, I'm going fishing with 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 the, with the boys, so that'll be fun. Saturday, there's no wrestling to cover. Oh, wow, I can finish off the Ghost Rider double feature. Sunday, I'm going to the live event here in Orlando because I'm getting my ticket tomorrow. You can look for this guy, Hobo Tom. I'll announce where I'm sitting. Again, if you want to say hi to me, you get a little shout-out here on my YouTube channel. Um, Monday and Tuesday, uh, I might do... A super combo show on Wednesday. That's my spa week. Even a hobo has to relax every so often. So I'm taking that week. That's spa week. Sauna. Pool. Jacuzzi. Beach. Jelly beans. Cheez-Its. Seltzer water. So perfect. So this is my Roman week. My Roman spa week. So probably Wednesday, I'll put together a combo show and post that somewhere. Friday will be the normal impact show. And then the next week, Monday, oh, I have to call the vet too. Shoot. Monday. Tuesday will be the same. Friday is the same. And that wraps up July. And then the first Saturday in August, August 3rd, you can check out my r and r, &R show as I do Triple Mania. So this is good, getting a little long, and I don't have any plans really past Triple Mania since then my real job starts soon, which is good. And I shall see everyone for sure Friday. Bye.